Orange is the new black star, Yael Stone. You've been uh, shuffling around the world quite a bit recently to promote season three that just launched and Orange Con was just in New York. How crazy has it been to see this kind of these legions of fans um, in the third season of the show, like if it was back at the first season? I'm actually finding it more intense than the first season, to be honest. Um, I think there's a level of loyalty uh, and a sense of ownership with the Orange fans that's just increased, actually. I think there's there's something about um, the, the nature of the Netflix model where people can just watch as much as they want. So there's this real sense of, of connection with characters because, you know, people are spending the day, you know, 13 hours straight with these characters um, and, and they're relating to them in their own bedrooms. And so I, I think there's this, there is a kind of sense of connection that has just grown over three seasons. Now, of course, you do play the um, the lovable sociopath Lorna Morello on the show, fan favorite, of course, and um, you know, and you're a celebrated, award winning stage actress out in in Australia, which is you know where where your your native land, and um, and I'd I'd heard that you'd moved to New York to start kind of a, a co founder of a theater company here. How did you how did you from all that land? I guess tell us the story, and then how did you land into the role of Morello? Um, I, I sort of fell into acting when I was quite young, uh, professional acting when I was quite young. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't fall into kind of the hobby of it. That was something I'd really wanted to do always. And I started when I was like eight, um, and really enjoyed doing a lot of poetry readings and things like that. Um, and then I was 13, uh, going to a, um, a performing arts high school and there was a, a kind of call out to to cast this movie and long story short i ended up getting it and um i think that that was you know that's the logical beginning um and i i didn't really think oh this is a job that you can have i mean that seems silly to you know make a profession out of pretending to be other people um but things kind of tripped along and i inevitably like found myself circling back uh, on this thing that I just enjoyed so much and it took me a long time to really say yeah this is this is what I want to do for me that that's really that required a lot of confidence um, and, and took a, a lot of years of working actually to, to finally just be like yeah I mean this I really love this and this is what I want to do I guess um, that that statement was really strong for me when I decided to, to move to New York um, I was doing a play with with Jeffrey Rush uh, in Sydney and called Diary of a Madman. And it transferred to BAM in New York. And that was sort of when that, that transition happened. Um, I had shaved my head for the play. So I, I came to New York in the middle of winter with no hair. Um, and we were doing a sellout season at BAM. And the, the, all of those <laughs> factors were incredibly overwhelming. And suddenly I was like in New York, dealing with New York. and. Um, and it was really scary and and way, way overstimulating for me. And I thought, yeah, this is a good place for me to, um, to take myself out of my comfort zone. Um, and, you know, I'd, I'd, ha I'd been having a really wonderful, um, really nourishing career in Australia. Um, and have, have, I, I, in my mind, I've worked with some of the most brilliant actors you know that I could ever have hoped to work with in Australia um, we have an incredible theater world there I you know I think we make some of the best theater around so it, it was incredibly satisfying for me to, to be doing that um, but yeah I was, I was sort of at a point where I wanted to frighten myself again um, so yeah I did that I, I moved to New York um, and I think it was about four months after that that I, I started working on Orange. So it was, a, I mean, I was very, very lucky. I'm well aware that I was extremely lucky to kind of have that, only that short amount of time to be kind of hanging out here. But, you know, I, I, it was the very traditional route. I auditioned for the role. Um, I actually auditioned for, for Nikki, so uh, Natasha's part first, and that was silly. I was bad at that. 
um, but they, they were kind enough to have me back. And, um, and Lorna, oddly enough, has been a really good fit, even though she feels very, very different to me. I mean, speaking of, of frightening, you not only uh, moved with a shaved head to New York to get yourself out of your comfort zone, but four months later, you moved straight into a jail cell, which, uh, you know, it, it's frightening, I would imagine, enough in its own right. Um, another thing that may be kind of scary to, um, you know, somebody, a, a veteran of the stage um, like yourself, how um, how was the transition to go from having uh, an audience, you know, reaction at the end of, of of a play that you did or, you know, whatever stage production you had done to then going to a series um, where there was, you didn't, you didn't get any feedback until Netflix had launched the whole thing. Um, and so you weren't sure how people were going to take in your performance or how your performance is going daily. I, I would imagine that's quite a transition for an actor. Yeah, great question. Totally. I mean, completely terrifying. Completely terrifying. I, I really felt like I was, I mean, the whole experience of, of moving here um, was an act of fake it till you make it kind of thing. Like uh, I really felt like I was just bluffing my way through this experience. And, you know, without that sense of immediate feedback, that is really, you know, that is really frightening, especially, I mean, I, I can't believe I'm bringing this up myself, but the accent, it was a bold choice. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't really know how it was going to go down or if it was going to offend people or um, or if I was just stepping way too far outside the bounds of, of my own skill. Um, so it was really scary that first season. I, I, I do really remember feeling like, you know, I was very lucky because I arrived on set with, uh, with, with, with Uzo. I remember very distinctly being sitting there with her her and I had done very limited amounts of, of television. I mean, I think it was her first time on a set, if I remember correctly. And we were just like kind of bouncing off each other, um, kind of like sharing that insecurity together. Um, for, for a lot of us, it was a really risky moment. Um, I think all of us have, been, have risked a great deal, certainly in that first season because there was a lot of uh, a lot of leaps taken that could have gone one way or the other um, and you know obviously another difference between that stage uh, reaction and and a television kind of world is that I don't you know we don't know those character arcs and in theater I would be very clearly plotting that journey and you know creating an architecture of story um, but you can't you can't do that when people are writing for you in an ongoing way. You don't know what's happening. So that sense of like letting go of that control was also a big change for me as well. You kind of just alluded to it in the first season. Uh, you we were introduced to uh, Lorna Morello, um, and then in the second season we actually got to uh, to experience or, or see her entire backstory kind of kind of fold out. How how special was that for you to tell? Um, Morello's backstory, and then how did that, if at all, um, maybe shape or mold the way that you saw Morello after that? It was it was incredibly fun. It was incredibly fun to learn more about her. I also think that that particular episode was so skillfully constructed by Sean Hedder, who who wrote the episode. Um, I. I, it was it was very complex because not only did it have a, a backstory um, that revealed the past, we were also in the present with Lorna breaking out of the prison. So we were beyond the prison walls in the past and in the present, which doesn't often happen in the show. Um, so there was like a lot a lot of new information coming from from both sides, and I just thought Sean handled that so skillfully and the way that that particular story Lorna's story was interwoven with all the other stories in that episode again so masterfully done by her um so I as soon as I read it I felt incredibly lucky that that that's the material that I had to work with I was also really shocked I didn't know any of the information that that I'd read in that in that episode so I it was pretty I mean I I knew something was up 
with Lorna. I had my suspicions and my theories, um, but it was so much more than I could have ever, ever thought. So I, I'm aware that there is a lot of honking going on outside, so it's an authentic New York experience. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a problem. It's, it's glad to see you outside of the, uh, the prison wall, so honk, honk away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you kind of alluded to the complexity of, of Morello. I mean, she is quite a tricky play, uh, character um, to play on the show because not only um, did you have to come up with this accent, um, this kind of New Jersey Boston accent that you do have, but also, or that you don't have in, in real life, obviously, mm -hmm. but I mean that you do have on the show, but also had to find a way to make her um, sympathetic, you know, with all the stuff that, that she had done. Um, because she she has quite quite the the rap sheet of shady things that she did. Um, did you did you base her off of anybody, or how did you approach her in order to give her kind of that heart that she does have? I am a big believer in I guess not judging characters um, when you're playing them too harshly. Um, I, and I have just naturally, I have a lot of love for her. I, I, I think she's really special and really lost. And I think if she'd sort of been given this, given a little more love and a little more guidance, things wouldn't have happened quite as they did. So, so I, I think I naturally feel very compassionate to, towards her. And I think the other really important thing in terms of playing her is that she is deluded. She's actually, it's not, it's not all, she, she's not completely aware of, of the extremity, you know. Um, she, she believes that her actions are justified um, and even when she oversteps the bounds, you know, way beyond normal, acceptable social behaviour. But I think when I, if I maintain a belief that, that these actions are justified, that the love is there with, with a character that I might be, stalking um that that that's really important in grounding it in compassion for her and you know i think so many of the the people on the show do that so beautifully i remember watching danielle brooks's episode the tasty um and just my heart just breaking because uh, not only was the episode written so beautifully but performed so so beautifully um, and, and that's what the show does so well. We see where someone's come from and, and why they've made some some pretty shady decisions, um, but we're informed so strongly by their personal life, by why they've made those decisions that we can't help but understand. And I think, you know, all of us have, have made terrible decisions here and there. And it just, you know, it just takes a little bit of kind of connecting with yourself and your own mistakes to kind of connect with the characters and have a great deal of compassion for them because they are so well written. You know. Now when you um when when you get a script like like you did for um a whole other whole the, the episode that you had um kind of alluded to when you're reading because it seems like you know I imagine everybody does um cares about their the character they play so much as if they were just another person sitting sitting right next to them. Do you ever get scripts like that and you just are, are just like Lorna what are you doing you can't put a bomb under somebody's car you can't stop this guy or break into his house like do you ever I guess um look at it as from an audience perspective um you know because she's she's just digging herself deeper and deeper into these holes yes I I think I'm I had that experience probably more when I watched the episode afterwards because it had been some time and I for some reason, I can distance myself quite a lot from the the, the character that I see. I guess because she looks so different, she sounds so different. Um, so I, I watch the episode kind of like um, almost feeling anxiety for the character um, when I knew what was going to happen. Um, <laughs> so that that's odd. But I think on reading the script, it was more about uh, probably an, an actor brain immediately trying to like map out um that trajectory and and how and why this all makes sense and trying to kind of make a a personal in, in instinctual sense of everything that was going on so yeah you i i can't help but read this the scripts and immediately sort of i guess start work on them um and it's it's you know a year later when i get to see it that i'm sort of more 
uh, excited by the character arc and what's going to happen and if someone's going to get caught or not. Now, uh, uh, speaking of that kind of um, actor's brain that, that you go into for the character, uh, uh, you know, Morello is is so complex and, and um, there's so many emotions that you, you get to display and have displayed throughout the, um, you know, the first three seasons. How do you, um, specifically in season two, where it seemed, um, you know, the roughest for Morello, how do you, I guess, uh, as Yael, kind of take yourself out of her character after after you're done with the season or complete with the day, um, one that's maybe a little, you know, a little over emotional? Like, how do you uh, escape that? How, how do you just come back to yourself? Well, I think you know if, if you if you do work in the beginning that makes you feel safe, like you know if you connect with the whatever technique you're using, um, you know if that's kind of grounded in a process, then I I feel safe that that things aren't going to hang on um, because you know if I'm very marked in my process and know that it's a process, um, then I then I also know how to kind of unpack it as well um, and clean up the toys and put them back in the box at the end of the day um, and and with Lorna it's very it's very great you know when when I arrive at work it's it, it's very it's become very sort of natural process to like put on the undergarments and and then and get the uniform on and then slowly with hair and makeup because she sort of has more more hair and makeup than you know I would normally be used to through that process, something just happens somewhere along the way where the accent will just sort of naturally start and I don't really notice it. Um, and in the same way, at the end of the day, as I'm kind of cleaning my face and taking things off, um, it's very literal for me, like take, taking it all off. It's kind of like, all right, goodbye. But, you know, yeah, there, there, has, there has been some painful, painful moments and painful days, I think. Um, there was one. There was one day with uh, with Natasha on the stairs, where, where Lorna's kind of being forced to admit something she doesn't really want to admit. She's kind of prematurely being made to tell the truth, and and it. I rem I remember that kind of you you know connecting with some pain, and and I really love working with Natasha so much. I don't. I wouldn't like to kind of pinpoint exactly what that is, but. Um, she makes me she she has allowed me to do some really you know um connected work with her she's been open to me in that way and she i i just love it so much so i'm very grateful to to her to kind of have had so many wonderful sort of raw scenes and felt safe and and felt like it you know it's still work but but you know we're connected as as people and that's a, that's a great feeling to have and you don't always get that yeah i mean it seems like you and and, and your cast um have connected pretty pretty um pretty uh closely and um it, it, that kind of paid off and shows on screen because you guys recently won the screen actors guild awards for best um ensemble uh comedy ensemble i don't believe you were there at least i didn't see you there um but how how did you find out about the win? I guess if you weren't there, and what what was the? I mean, was there just were you just overcome with uh, you know because this was shared with your whole your whole cast and it came from your peer group of actors? Yeah, uh, it was lovely. I was in Australia. I uh, was shooting a sci-fi for the Sci-Fi Channel, um, so I was in Australia in a completely different time zone, and I do remember exactly where I was because it was pretty funny. I was in my underpants on the roof of an apartment building that I was staying in, sweeping leaves up, um, and and my phone buzzed, and and I just thought this is wonderfully absurd because I knew everyone was probably like dressed up to the nines, um, and you know they with their trophies cheering, and I was with a broom in my underpants. <laughs> <laughs> sweeping up leaves um but that did not detract from from the real joy that that it is to win something as a group because i you know i guess oh, oh, awards are a strange thing in some ways because they single out one person um and, and obviously we know we can't make anything in as an island you know we all work together in a creative process um so intimately 
and so to 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 see those pictures of all those beautiful people standing on stage together and 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 such an incredibly diverse gorgeous group of people who really do lean on each other to make the work good and knowing also all the other people who weren't on the stage who are part of that that gang people behind the camera in front of the camera i mean it's it's a beautiful thing to be able to kind of to share something as a team because it really i mean particularly with this show it really is such a team exercise so it's it's amazing yeah well um uh, you know on the individual note though i mean you've garnered a lot of a lot of critical acclaim especially for um for season two and there have been, um, you've also collected quite a bit of Emmy buzz on your side. Um, nominations are, are coming up pretty soon. And if you're nominated in the Drama Supporting Actress category, you have to submit one episode that best uh, represents your work from, from the season two season. Do you have one in mind? I think you do, but I don't know. <laughs> I guess, you know, the, the show has obviously changed categories. Um, you know, now we're in the, in the drama category and uh, I, I would imagine that the that that episode we've been speaking out probably probably supports that kind of work because there because it was it was heavy on the on the drama not so not so heavy on the laughs for, for me that that episode um, but you know I think that's what's so cool about this show it's like it is really hard to to categorize I mean I think we sit com oddly enough we kind of sit can sit comfortably in comedy and in drama. Um, because the the show is kind of really rich with a lot of different influences. So, um, yeah, I I I I kind of view. I'm sort of very outside of it. You know, I I haven't really thought that much about it because I don't really see myself as. Um, I see myself as a very small cog in this very beautiful big wheel. Um, so. I'm kind of not thinking about it so specifically about myself, but you know, I I think the show really does deserve um, some recognition, and and that you know that would be really exciting if the show was recognised. All right, we'll we'll move on to um, some of our final questions, and there'll be fun questions, some fan questions. Um, so we'll start with uh, with this one: who um, who do you hope to have more screen time with in season four? Um, I had a really wonderful experience being in Laverne's salon in season three. That definitely gave me a huge buzz. I, I, I was really excited to be able to finally work with Laverne. Um, you know, uh, there's this odd thing with the show because it kind of does um, tackle head on this sort of racial segregation that happens in the prison environment. It means I don't get to work sometimes outside of my racial group, which is so bizarre. Because <laughs> as we're trying to break down these ideas, we're sort of like conforming to them in the work, which is odd. So, um, you know, th that would be wonderful to kind of also uh, get to, to work with, you know, the, the ladies in in the ghetto and Spanish Harlem and um, I, I would love to kind of move around a bit. Um, that was the great joy of being the, the driver um, in the prison that you kind of have this ability to meet all these different characters, which is, which is so cool. Um, but, you know, always it, any chance that I get to be near Kate Mulgrew is a wonderful thing. And, you know, I really feel like I, I just have learned so much from, from her. Um, I just try and just shut up and, and listen when, when she's around. She's a, she's a really wonderful teacher and she's very generous with her knowledge as well. Um, so I, I really appreciate okay. um, Is there anything you added to uh, the role that wasn't originally scripted um, for you? Uh, a lot of filthy things that come out of uh, Lorna and Nikki Nichols' mouth. It's it, 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 it's just coming out. <laughs> um, so a lot of those things are unscripted, um, which can be really fun and can go too far sometimes. Um, but well, you know, when I read the character, the, the character, the description, as I'm sure you probably heard from speaking to with other ladies, uh, um, they they're quite limited. In, in a way, sort of allowed a great deal of freedom. You know, the, the character description for Lorna was that she's wearing makeup. And that's what I had to go off. So um, 
for me, it was really fun to be like, okay, well, what does this mean? Here's a woman in, in prison. What does it mean to be someone like de dedicated to put, putting on makeup in a, in an environment where you think that that might be completely unnecessary, where you might be at the lowest uh, blow, you know? Um, so that kind of gave me this idea that, oh, she's working with facades and with masks. Um, and, and what does that do for her? she does she puts on this makeup to to what end um and then you know as the seasons have gone on I've really got to play with that more and more um in season three I kind of suggested that when we when Nikki was sent to Max that Lorna might lose her mask and lose that lose that ability to even try um and that was a great way for me to be able to as an actor express that grief in a really simple shorthand way um, and that and that's I love those conversations that you can have with the makeup and hair department those people do so much beautiful work and, and you know when you can work out that you're a team um, I just think that's the, the best way to, to begin a conversation and you know the, the ladies and, and gentlemen that, that, that do that kind of work they're invested in the characters just as much as, as we are thinking about that too um and and they can be a great resource to come into work and be like you know i've been sort of thinking about this what do you think about it um and and then we can you know we can take that conversation you know on to set if we think it's a good idea but i really enjoyed um ch working with her look ch changing that up because it, it's it's not that's not true for all characters but for this character she's so connected to the mask and so the changing and playing with that mask and seeing how it affects the person inside has been really interesting that's cool um and then final question uh we ha have to have to get to it what um what inspired lorna's accent i wish i had a great answer for this <laughs> i really do i should make up something awesome you, should. you get I asked it all the time i'm sure I do, I do. You know, I think there is, um, in terms of the, the the vowels and the consonants, that was very much a construction of sitting down and being like, okay, this this vowel is going to go to here, this consonant will go to here. It was kind of like making a rule book, a phonetic rule book that's, that's very particular to Lorna. Some of the vowels that I, you know, marked out are, of Boston vowels, you know, a lot of it's like this very kind of urban Brooklyn sound. Um, I think the tone, the sound, I can't believe I'm about to say this um, and, and make a record of it, but there's something of um, there's something of Adelaide from Guys and Dolls in there, isn't there? <laughs> Where the, the film version, um, I wish I knew that actress's name off the top of my head, but I don't. Um, but that, I mean, my voice sits a little lower naturally, but Lorna's is kind of, it's somewhere up here and it's very, it, it kind of lives in the bridge of my nose a little bit, you know? Um, so uh, definitely like finding that placement uh, is a very helpful like shortcut into her for me. And I do, I think there is something of the Adelaide from Guys, with, Guys and Dolls in there, but really it, it was a matter of, the night before the audition kind of like playing around with sounds and um and finding something that i thought maybe might work well it has i mean it's uh it's uh it, it's worked not only for um a, as a fan thing you know that people love to ask you as well but um also just as, as part of a great performance that you that you've um you know given the past three season mm -hmm. um thank we, you so much that's very very kind of you to say that to me thank you of course, um, you know, we, um, we're going to wrap up now and wish you the best of luck coming up with Emmy nominations coming up. Congratulations on the show, on the Screen Actors Guild Award and on everything else that that's going on for you. And we hope you join us again soon. Thank you. It's my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much.